Welcome. In this video, we cover section 6.4, expected value in games. We look at average value and expected value and see that they are kind of the same thing. And then we turn our attention to expectation in Bernoulli trials, and we'll consider a series of games problem. Let's begin with an example. Suppose that there are 100 households. 30 of them have zero children, 25 have one child, 30 have two children, 10 have three children, and five households have four children. We could ask ourselves, what is the average number of children per household? We can't just take the average of the different child numbers, zero through four. What we really need is a weighted average. So the zero has a little bit more weight. The zero is multiplied by 30. The one is multiplied by 25, two by 30, and so on. Each child number is multiplied by the number of households that have that number of children. And then since there's 100 households altogether, we divide by 100. And we find that the average is 1.35. You might also say that a household has an expected value of 1.35 children. So if I pick one household at random from these 100 households, then I expect there to be about 1.35 children. Here's another way of computing that. Let's take that uh, fraction, like was on the previous screen, and let's distribute the 100. And look at this form. Here we really see the big number in front, that's the number of children. And what is that fraction? Well, 25 households have one child, so this is the probability, if I pick one household at random, the probability that the household has one child. Then I go two times 30 over 100, that's the probability that the household has two children. And then 10 over 100, the probability that the household has three children, and so on. So I could compute my average value or expected value by taking the number of children times the probability that that number of children arises. Let x be the number of children in a household. x is called a random variable. There's an experiment that's done, and in this case the experiment is choose one household at random, and the outcome of the experiment is associated with a number. You know, upon choosing one of these households, I have a number. I have the number of children in that household. So the expected number of children per household is zero times the probability that x equals zero plus one times the probability that x equals one plus two times and so on and so on. And that's exactly this computation that I have at the top of the screen. Oh, and this e bracket x, that's just our notation that means the expected value of variable x. Here's another example. A biased die has the following probabilities. One, two, three, four, five, and six, those are the possible outcomes. But it seems pretty unlikely that it's going to land on a one or a two, and maybe the four, the four and the five are much more likely. So if I roll this die lots and lots and lots of times, on average, what do I expect the value of the roll to be? So I can figure this out by taking one times the probability that the die shows one, plus two times the probability that the die shows two, and so on. In this case, I have a random variable x, and my x can take on the values one through six. And I'm looking for the expected value of this variable x. And in this case, it turns out to be 3.9. Here's our official definition. Let x be a random variable whose possible values come from x1, x2, up through xn. Then the expected value of x is x1 times the probability that x is x1 plus x2 times the probability that x is x2, and so on all the way up to the very end, xn times the probability that x equals xn. Here's an example. Suppose you play this game where you, you pay $2 to play, and here's how it works. Two dice are rolled, and you get $5 for each six that comes up. What is your expected winnings in this game. So every time you play, how much money do you expect to get back in the game? Well, let x, our random variable, let x be winnings. And so the experiment is rolling this pair of dice, and the winnings that you can get back is either 0, 5, or 10. So the expected value of x, 0 times the probability you get 0, plus 
five times the probability that you get five, or ten times the probability that you get ten. What are these different probabilities? And maybe our uh, six by six die chart will help. How about the probability that you get five dollars back? Well, in that case, that's when exactly one six appears. So maybe I'll just mark those with a five. There are, it looks like, maybe 10 possibilities. So there are 10 situations out of 36, so 10 out of 36, that uh, you will get exactly $5 back upon the roll of the dice. Now, it could be that you get double sixes, and in that case, you get $10 back. Uh, but that's the only one. So there's one out of 36 for that. And then all 25 cases remaining, you get nothing back. So it's multiplied by zero, so it doesn't really matter anyway, but we can call that 25 out of 36. And so to compute the expected value of x, I can take zero plus five times 10 36 plus 10 times 1 36, and that answer ends up being about $1.67. So isn't that great? Aren't you happy that you can play this game again and again, and every time you play, you will win about $1.67 back each time? Of course, you uh, have to pay $2 each time you play. So in fact, you are suffering a net loss of about 33 cents each time you play. Here's another game, and this one's for you to try. If this one also, you pay $2 to play the game. Five dice are rolled, and there's a variety of outcomes and a variety of different payouts that you can get for each of those outcomes. So do the math. Take a second, pause the video. Uh, what is your expected earnings on each roll? Give this a try, and then start it up again to check your work. All right, let's see how you did. It turns out that the computation looks like that across the bottom of the screen. And on average, you can expect to win back about a buck 62, $1.63 uh, every time you play. Of course, you are paying $2 to play. So uh, you actually are, are losing money every time you play, but so it goes. Okay, how about expectation in Bernoulli trials? Suppose a die is rolled 300 times. How many sixes do you expect? Or perhaps 15 marbles are drawn with replacement from a bag that has 10 reds and 40 blues. How many reds do you expect in these 15 draws? Go ahead and Pause the video for a second right now. Uh, these aren't too difficult. Think about how you might solve them and then uh, start it up again to check your work. All right. So in the first example, 300 times 1 sixth. That's how we want to approach it. The die is rolled 300 times and about 1 sixth of the time we will see a six. And so that's about 50 rolls out of the 300. In the second example, the solution ends up being 15 times one-fifth. You know, one-fifth of the time, I expect that a red will appear. So if I draw 15 marbles, then one-fifth of that 15 is three. Here's the general rule. If a trial has success with probability p, and if n trials are performed, then we expect n times p successes. And we write the expected value of x is n times p. Let's turn our attention to another game series problem. Team A wins against Team B with a probability of 0.75. In a best of five series, what is the expected number of games? This is kind of a neat question, right? We're not talking about probability anymore. We're talking about an expected number. Well, let's say that x is our number of games. That's, let x be that random variable. The number of games that you can have in a series is either 3, 4, or 5. So what we really need to do in order to solve this problem is figure out what's the probability that the series lasts 3 games, and what's the probability that the series lasts 4 games, and what's the probability that the series lasts 5 games. And then once I can figure out those probabilities, then I can compute the expected value of x. So here's where I'll ask you to pause the video, but maybe let's just talk about these probabilities real quick before I show you the answer. Um, the probability that x equals 3. The series can only go in two ways. Either A wins all three in a row, or B wins all three in a row. So to compute this, 
and you would just compute 0.75 cubed plus 0.25 cubed. And that'll give you the, exp the probability that x equals 3. Now, for 4 and 5, it's a little more challenging. I have to imagine 1, 2, 3, 3 blanks and then A wins, 1, 2, 3, and then B wins. But what goes in the blanks? In the first case, I'll have two A's and one B. In the second case, two B's and one A. So figure out how many ways you can fill that in and the probability of each outcome, and then add all those together, and that'll give you your probability that the series lasts four games. And for X equals five, one, two, three, four, followed by A, one, two, three, four, followed by B. And in each case, you'll have two A's and two B's, two A's, two B's. All right, so I've given you a hint and a push in the right direction. At this point, pause the video, see if you can figure out your probabilities for X equals three, four, and five, and then start the video again to check your work. Okay, welcome back. Here are the probabilities. All right, I hope those look good. And now it's a very simple task to compute the expected value. And it turns out that you plug those numbers in and you get about 3.77. So that's kind of neat, right? That tells us the expected number of games in a best of five series uh, is going to be about 3.77. You know, somewhere between three and four, maybe closer to four, a little four more often. Uh, that's just kind of cool to know that we've, we've been able to do that. And so there we go. Uh, this ends the video and our discussion of expected value.